Hey guys, Steve Allaire. Today we got a game in the Oyster for you. We got Stig on the screen here. And this ship's been growing on me a little bit. I haven't been able to play it a whole lot because we've been grinding out a lot of tier 7s. Uh, as of the recording of this, I basically got the XP I need for all of them. That'll be coming out a uh, week from next Monday when the next update hits, tier 8 introduction. But now I'm starting to think, well, we got some of these newer ships. The Oyster, the Xin Yang, uh, even Kansas. Some of these newer Tier 7s that are pretty good ships. Seemingly pretty good lines. Uh, but, you know, we get to the end and then got to go back to checking out some other stuff. So I don't get a lot of XP on those. You know, it happens more gradually, at least for people that don't play the same ship a lot over and over again. So I'm thinking, well, we got two options. We can kind of grind Tier 7 premiums. Trying to get some credits, unlock some more of these new tier 8s, or take advantage of this daily XP bonus thing. Now, relatively easy to get, um, I don't know, it's, you got to get 2,500 XP or something like it on an American ship, a Soviet ship, whatever it is. Uh, there's one mission for each nation. You can do it up to 10 times per day, and then you get 1,000 extra XP. And that's, you know, if you get three, four, five thousand 5,000 XP in a game... 30, you know, 33, 33%, 25%, 20%, whatever is pretty big boost. Okay, so even though credits are going to be tight here, it's not too often that you get a lot of XP uh, bonus type missions. And if you combine them with the triple gray star flags, you can actually get quite a bit of progress here. So I'm going to be kind of switching back and forth over the next week and change until the update going to go for some credits yes but also put some xp on some of these ships so that when the new tier eights come off of these lines we don't have to grind them as hard that's my plan anyways all right jumping in this game here domination mode and we're moving in here we got a skein coming around now we threw the zoning torps out there the reload on the oysters longer than the skein and whatever the other one is the vis beer or whatever the tier five is Vesteras, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But those ships reload, you know, 50, between 50 and 60 seconds, I think. Uh, Oyster a little bit longer, but I still like to get the zoning torps down. The skein just pushing in, though. I don't know if the guy put his controller down or what's going on, but uh, between me and the gas going, take them out pretty quickly there. And we'll just wait till drop spot, and then we're going to go re engage A. You can see A, we got some sort of cloud there to the north of it. Uh, we had the skein, which is no longer with us, and then the battleship, three, two and a half, three squares north of the cap. I mean, that's an out of position battleship. So, whatever's on A, and by the way, we got an Akizuki tier seven Japanese gunboat on the, you know, about a square and a half to the west of A, and then some battleship that can't shoot anything because he's sitting behind the island. Well, he's shooting in the middle there, so can't support A necessarily, but he's supporting B, which is fine. We don't fault him for that. Moving in here, though, we got the Akatsuki pushing in, and we had two destroyers over here. Four destroyer game. One of the caps was bound to have two, and this is the one. So we slam on the brakes here, noticing, is the guy shooting yes or no? So whenever the answer is no in these destroyer v. destroyer fights, we got to assume that they're launching torpedoes. Whether they are or not, we don't know, but you have to make that assumption. So we stop for a second, and then we hit the speed boost, hit the engine at full throttle, and gunned it forward, because most... 90% of the destroyer players, especially the ones that frequently get close to you, trying to torpedo close range, they aim on, on the indicator. So if we juke, go backwards, go forwards, do something to change the direction and the speed, usually they're going to miss. Okay, and then usually if they're spending a lot of time aiming the torps, you've been hammering them with the guns the whole time, you're going to win that fight. All right, so we're capturing A, uh, blue's got B, red's got C. We got pretty good map control, and by the way, we're up two destroyers. Uh, so pretty good start for the B team here. Got to get the cap over here. That's my responsibility. Thinking to myself, okay, the Sakatsuki, somehow the Vanguard is getting spotted. I think it's probably from the uh, basically the center of the map there. But I'm noticing that the Vanguard is shooting towards this guy. I'm thinking, okay, we're capturing the base anyways, right? There's the shot. Hit him. I don't know if you saw him. I assume it was a blind fire shot. It's a pretty good shot if that's the case. Uh, but... You know, we're capturing the base anyway. Okay, we got it now, yes. But since the torps are about to reload anyways, I figure, what the heck. And the Vanguard, it was kind of stopped. I'm thinking, I'm putting myself in his shoes. I'm thinking, okay, he seems like he's in the mood to charge the smoke since he hit the guy blind fire once. 
he wants to get a little bit closer, maybe run for him. So I threw the Torps basically on the indicator there. 41 seconds later, if he doesn't change his speed or heading, he'll die. Now, it's incumbent upon you as a battleship player, or really any ship, you shouldn't be doing the same thing for 41 seconds in a row. You gotta be uh, yanking on your throttle knobs, you gotta be playing with the uh, steering gears, or, you know, just changing what you're doing a little bit from time to time, because the destroyers, most of them, they're not really worried about capping, they're worried about launching torpedoes, and they're launching them at you. So if you're predictable, you're gonna have a hard time. Moving in here, though, we got A, we got B, uh, boom, there he goes. Um, what can we do now? Well, we can go Torp Battleships. This is a five battleship, four destroyer match. Uh, it's kind of the complainers a la mode uh, lineup. Or we could just counter these destroyers, which is actually our play here. So Torp and the five battleships who are parked on the moon, irrelevant to the game. Uh, we already control A and B. We need to defend those. There is one battleship that's relevant. You can see the one who just disappeared on the map there, about a square and a half away north of B. He's relevant, but the destroyers, if we can get rid of them or at least hamper their ability to get out of sea and make some scoring plays, that should seal the deal. Because the longer we have the cap advantage here, the harder it's going to be for red to win, especially if they're so far out of range that they can't hit anything. So, Loyang, I think that's a dispersion build. Watch the shots on this guy. That's what it looks like on the other end of it. Dispersion builds, I think, are great on every ship. And this would be something like, well, you got your ship's camo for sure. Uh, tier 6 and higher, you have the concealment mod, which has a dispersion factor. You can throw uh, Vian, the British destroyer commander, as an inspiration. And uh, what's the other one? There's four of them, potentially. Oh, there, some of the commanders have the uh, incoming dispersion. I'm not necessarily going to find them on all of these ships. But if you got that available, you can do that as well. And a lot of destroyers uh, have that available. So it's the slot 401 that says in increase income and dispersion on your commander builds. So if you combine all those factors, it can be pretty hard to hit. And you can see here we're aiming seems decently enough, but some of the shots are going to the right, some of the left, far, short, you know. Anytime your shells are kind of surrounding the target, then you could say, okay, that's what's going on there. Or could just be rotten aim, which is usually the uh, problem with my... <laughs> Shots not hitting stuff that's going on there. So we got him off. Both destroyers, both remaining destroyers in red gone. Now we got three left and we got two battleships to support. Those red guys over there are looking pretty dinged up. We do have a relatively high health uh, Georgia or something directly to my right. There he is right there, about three quarters health. Trying to ambush him, trying to ambush the Iowa, trying to defend B really because we've done our jobs here. I would love to get on C, capture that base, get those points for myself, get the points for my team. It's going to be tough to do, though. I can't go through an Iowa and a Georgia that are, you know, closer than the breadth of my detection circle, so that's not an option. So we launch the Torb, see if we can hit the Georgia, see if we can hit the Iowa back up here. Taking some damage, yes, it's the playmaking currency. Boom, 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 boom. Six torpedo hits, and that's more than we hit on the Georgia. So both of those guys were taking uh, Iowa. Looks like he's got a flood sticking. Haven't fired the guns now, we drop spot. We're gonna bounce off this island here and then begin moving away from the Georgia who's in our blue detection circle. So if he comes around the island, we'd be spotted and we'd be wounded slash killed rapidly. Iowa, we leave him to flood to death. We actually kill him with the guns. And now we're looking for the double here, Gnizen. I'll bring it on. Team shooting at him, we chime in as well. Boom, we got him. Yeah. Game kind of flubbed the beat drop on that one, unfortunately. Lil John wasn't interested in remixing that one, but did get the coveted double. Can we get the double slash crack and the double crack? And uh, that would be outstanding. I'm hoping this guy can stay alive long enough to, for us to get around here. Uh, we got enough health that we could conceivably gun him down in the open, or, you know, that's probably going to be the play if we can get around here before the team does, but I think they're going to wind up killing him. So the Oyster. Still learning the ship, uh, but getting a fair amount of games now. I think I get about 20, 30 extra, or elite XP, whatever it's called. 130 if you combine the mod grind, and I've been having a lot of success with this one. So if you haven't looked, given the European Destroyer line a look yet, I think this is a worthy ship at the end of it. So that's a look at the Oyster for you guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming for you all the time. Questions? Comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and we'll see y'all later. Peace.